Okay guys, now we're going to talk a little bit about the shapes in the actions panel. Right here are your shapes and let's get over there with the right pointer, I apologize. We're going to take and look at our shapes. Here in this shapes menu we have our line, which is our line type. It's going to come in as a score line. You do have the opportunity in the edits panel to change that and we'll cover that in just a little bit. Then you have all of your basic shapes. You can just about create almost anything that you want here in Design Space using those basic shapes if you want to take the time and do that. But right now I'm just going to enter in a couple of shapes and we're just going to cover what they do. Uh, with our actions panel because our actions panel is very important to all of our designs. This is where we're going to group, attach, weld, slice, flatten for print and cut, uh, our duplicate, the advanced text tool, and our contour. What do they mean? Group is just that. If you in, drag a box or your finger across your iPad, you will select everything that that box hits. If it only hits one of the images or two, if you've got several images on there, it's only going to select what that box hits as you drag it. As you can see, I just got the square there. But if I drag it across the whole screen, then it will select both. And you notice if I select one, my group is not available. You can't have a group of one. Group is more than one. So if you have two selected, then you have a group. Now you can group that. Why is that important? If I group that, let's say I have a card on an envelope and it is one size, but I want to change the size of it. If I change the size of the card only, then the envelope is going to be too small or too large. If I change the envelope, then the card may or may not fit. But if I select everything, then I can use my handle and I can size everything proportionately so that they both still fit and they're together. Let's see. Um, and that's basically like putting everything in a sack and taking it over to your mats and then laying it out on the mat. You can put it in the sack and move it around together and it stays together. But once it's time to open up that sack and make it, then they're going to go to different places. That's really the only way I know to explain that. So that's what grouping does. Another important thing when you get to this actions panel is you saw me stretch it right here with the sizing handle. Okay, that's going to stretch. This one right here is going to rotate and it just rotates everything. Okay. I'm just going to hit undo because I don't want any of that skewed right now. And then you have, of course, your red X. We all know what the red X does. That makes it go bye-bye. It's going away. Okay? Trash. And then you have a lock. This lock is going to unlock. And what that unlock does is it allows you to change and move everything together, but it also skews it together. Okay? So if you want it to stay proportion to a circle and a square, you're going to have to leave that locked. I'm just going to undo. We're going to undo those moves because I want to leave them as a circle and a square. So that is basically what your group does. You have your bag, everything's in the bag, goes over to the mat together, then you take it out of the bag and place it on different mats. What does attach do? Attach is going to attach the two together. That's like a gem clip. Okay, that's all it is, is a gem clip. And now when it goes over to the mat, it, you can see that it's one piece, and now my detach is available, but if I were to hit make it, and I'm just going to select that there, when I hit make it and take it over the mat, you can see that white line over it. Those are cut lines, guys. That means that my circle is going to cut out of my square, and you can't see it here, but my square is also going to cut out of that piece of that circle. So it's just going to chop all of that up. That's very important when you work with fonts and text because 
once you, um, I'm going to cancel this, uh, go back to the canvas. Once you, when you put fonts together and it's a script font and they touch, if you attach, everybody's going to scream, oh, you need to attach because if you group, it's going to all jumble up and it is. But if you attach, it's going to cut one letter out of the other letter and it's going to become a mess. Um, so that's when you're going to come from your paper, from your sack, to your paper clip, to your weld. And what weld is going to do is it's going to remove those inside cut lines. I'm just going to hit undo just so I can show you. Sorry about that, guys. I had an internet issue. So what I'm going to do is just hit undo. And when I undo, you can see that I get that cut line back. Um, and then we're just going to go over here to and select it and then we're going to ungroup it because I want you to see that that if I select that square you see that bounding box is still over that it, those are cut lines it's going to cut there okay and I just want to make sure that you understand your group as well so when I hit group and it's grouped together if I hit make it watch what happens to my image even though they're together here they're going to separate on the mat okay that's going to separate it even though they're together here attach is going to send them just like it is on the mat but it's going to make them cut out of one another so if I ta attach and then I hit make it you can see they're going to cut out of each other in there on the mat. I'm going to go back to the canvas and then if I weld, when I weld you see that that inside cut line is now gone. That's gone away. It's not there anymore. So that is basically how you remove those inner cut lines. So now you have your group, your weld, um, I'm just going to go over, your group and ungroup, your attach, your detach, your weld. There is no unweld. You can't unweld it. The only thing that you can do is to select undo. And when you undo, then you can separate those pieces after you ungroup them, that is. Or did I detach? I had them attached. So you can move them around. I'm still on. There we go. You can separate them by hitting undo. But once you save and you exit and you open that project back up, that weld is permanent. You can't hit undo. It's not going to undo it from there. It's, it's done. So the next tool that we have is called Slice. This is very important because everybody forgets this. When slicing, you may only slice two layers at a time. So my circle is a layer. My square is a layer. I cannot have anything grouped or anything attached to a layer because that makes it two layers. And for example, I'm just going to go over to shapes and I'm going to get a score line because your line does come in as a score. And I'm going to bring that over. And just for kicks and giggles, I'm going to select the two and I'm going to attach. I'm going to go back to my actions menu and attach it. So now if I want to slice my circle from that square, and I have that unlocked so it's not staying proportioned. I'm going to, I'm just going to go to the layers panel, guys, and show you guys that I have three layers there. And I want to change my colors. Let me, I'm just going to give you a peek at the edit panel. I don't want to confuse anybody, but I need that to be different colors and on the top so that I can show you guys. I'm going to arrange and send that to the back so that we can see our circle. 
and I'm going to make my circle a different color or my square a different color. Can only, there we go. Ah, it selected my score I want. There we go. And I'm just going to make that whatever color it picks here and apply so that we can see it. Okay, so now I have both of those layers. I'm going to close that layers panel and get back to the actions panel because that's what we're working on now. We're going to cover all of those. I just want to make sure that we cover every tool available. So now when I select those, you see that slice does not come up. Okay. So again, you can't see the slice. It's not there. But if I take a peek at that layers panel, oops, I got the, I keep grabbing my wrong, I have to have my mouse for one thing and my cursor for another. <laughs> so if I select both of those and I come over to the layers panel, you can see that I have the circle as one layer. Even though these are attached, that score line is a layer and then the square is a layer. So that's three layers and I can only slice two layers at a time and I can't have anything group or attached. So I am going to come in here and I'm just going to grab my square and I'm going to detach that score line. So now it's detached. You see that that disappeared. So if I select all, slice is not available. I have three layers. If I just select my square and my circle and I just drug a box around it then my slice is available if I get just let me move that out of the way if I just get these two you can see that I have them selected but no slice because you can't slice that line you can't slice a line from an image so I'm just gonna delete that line for now going to select it and we're going to delete it. Okay, that's what your trash can is. And I'm just going to hide that layers panel for now. So what does slice do? Slice is your pair of scissors. So if I wanted to slice this, there's a couple of ways I can do this. And it's going to depend on the image and the image type. If I want to cut that circle out of that square, I can do one of two things. I can attach it right here and it's all going to become one color but you see the cut line okay and when I send it over to the mat that's what it's going to do it's going to cut that circle out and then I can remove that circle from the square and use whichever piece it is that I was wanting which would be the square like a frame okay so I with this that works that doesn't always work sometimes we need to I'm just going to hit undo because it's easier. Sometimes we need to slice that out because we're going to put something else in there and we need to make sure it's going to fit lots of things or we just we're going to do something else. When I have the two layers and I hit slice then I have my layer that I sliced from. This is my gray layer and then you see this looks just like the attached layer except that piece is separate. So if I, for whatever reason if I wanted that down here then I could select the two and then I could weld those together if I wanted to and create a whole new shape. So just remember when you're slicing only two layers and nothing can be grouped, nothing can be attached or your slice will be grayed out. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this right here. We're going to go to a, we're going to go home. And I'm going to go to a new project. And if you've got anything on your canvas, you're going to get this project already exists. I'm just going to replace, but if you want to keep the previous, it's going to prompt you to save. And we'll get into that in just a second. So now I have, um, let's see, um, let's say I need to do something that has a lot of little pieces in it. So I'm going to go over to image and I'm just going to browse all images. And once that comes up, let's just say I want to do this one here. I'm going to pick that love 
and may even pick mm, this little house with all the balloons. As a matter of fact, I think I'll just do the house with the balloons. That one will be easier. So I'm going to insert that image. Okay. And now you can see that I have my little house in here. And if I look at the layers panel, I got all of these teeny tiny little pieces. Look at all of those. Uh, I don't know if I want to cut all of that all in say I'm doing cardstock or vinyl and layer it all up. It would get really, really, really thick. So my option here is to flatten for print and cut. Now watch that layers panel when I flatten it. it oops, I missed one. I don't know how, but I did. Now it's flattened and it's a cut and a print, but I have this caution. What does that caution mean? Print and cut area is six point on an iPad, 6.78 by 9.28. If you're on a computer, it's 6.75 by 9.25. I don't know why, but it is. So it's going to say that it's not supported. What it's telling you to do is it is supported. You're just going to have to make it a different size. And I'm going to hit undo just so I can get that other piece in there. And I am just going to drag and capture everything. And then I'm going to flatten. And now it's all one piece, but I still have the caution sign. So now to keep it proportioned, I'm going to leave it locked because if I didn't, then it would all get different sizes. So there, now you can see that it went away because I'm within those guidelines. So that's what flatten does and it's going to make it all one layer. Keep in mind, if you can see the grid behind your object, that means it's where it's going to cut. So if there is grid showing in all those little areas right there, it's going to cut those out. If you don't want them to do that, you need to duplicate, which you can do here or here in the layers panel. So you can duplicate it. And then you can take that duplicate and I'm going to unflatten it. And I'm going to come over to my weld going to weld it. Now, the only color that does not print is white. Okay? So if you want it to So if you want it to have if you uh sorry, I got tongue tied. So if you want to use that image and you want it that back there, you can see I can see the grid back there. So I know when I flattened it, I know all those teeny tiny pieces are going to cut and I don't want it to. So then that's where I am going to change this in my line type, which you have to go to edit for that. And we're going to cover that some more here in a minute. I'm going to take it off of print and change this to a cut, which would be no fill, and apply. And now you can see all of those cut lines came back there. I am going to then go to my actions. I'm going to go to my contour. Contour removes cut lines, guys. I'm just going to stretch this by pinching with my fingers or stretching my finger and my thumb out, and I'm just going to move it over. So instead of having all of that cut, I can remove those cut lines just by going in and clicking on them. And it can get touchy in here and want to remove the wrong things. I'm going to do this with my finger on my iPad instead of my mouse just so that I can get to all of these teeny tiny lines. That cursor is just not going to do it. It doesn't want to give me that little cut line right there. You have to click on the inside of those pieces. And it still doesn't want to give me that one piece. Give it that big piece back. Maybe I can get to this one. Oh, that one wants to be a little booger. I'm going to stretch it some more just so I can get to that cut line. Ah, there we go. So we're going to get rid of all of those 
and then I'm just going to zoom it back out. And I've removed all of the cut lines inside there. And why would I want to do that? Because now I have this shape. Okay, and I'm going to, I'm going to have to go over to the edit panel and send that to the back again. Let me select it. I'm going to use my arrange tool. We'll get into this more. I'm going to send that to the back. And come back to our actions. Now, when I place this over that image, I can flatten it to that and cause it not to cut. But you see back there, now it's a color. And I don't really want it a color unless maybe I want it the color of the sky or whatever. White is the only color that doesn't print. So you'll need to go over into Edit and change that color to white and then apply it. And then when you place that back over, you're not going to see grid back there. Everything is going to line up. You're going to select it all, come back into your Actions panel, and flatten it. And then you can see that it's one flattened image, and it's going to cut the shape of the house and the balloons, but it's not going to cut all of those little inside cut lines. Okay? So that is a very important tool, and that is how you flatten properly in order not to get all of that. If you just want it to cut the outside shape, you need it to cut just the outside shape. If you've got inside cuts, you're going to have to get rid of those. So then we, you can see that I have this little tool here. This is a nifty little 3D layer tool, and I'm using my wrong cursor. This little 3D tool here. This will show you your layers, so you can see how that's important. Now you can see that I have a white image back there. Okay, You can't see that here on the canvas, but it's back there. All right, And I'm just going to do some undo here. And I'm going to take this piece. I'm going to undo it. It's still flattened. There we go. So now I have two pieces. So if I were to select everything, and then rotate it. Now you can see that white image really good back there. Okay, so what happens if I unflatten this image as well? So if you wanted to know, you know, what are your layers, how many layers you had and what they look like, then you can simply select it and then you can see all of the different layers. Let me just, is everything unflattened? Oh, there's still on print and cut. When you've got, changed it to a print cut, let me just go and get another one. You can come in and um, go to your edit panel, and then you can come to print. You can take it off the print by going to no fill and selecting apply, and then it'll change it all back to cut, or you can go and get another one. But with it selected, now I can rotate that and see how many layers I really have. You can see all of those tiny little pieces by rotating that around, and then you can see everything. Okay, So that's a nifty little tool. When you let go of it, it's going to go back into place. It just shows you all of those layers and how they line up in the design. Nice little 3D tool that you guys have there that we do not have on the computer. Okay. So back on the Actions panel, because all of these panels intertwine, guys, I try to stay on one, but you have to have those others in order to do some of your things. Next, we have Advanced, and I'm just going to get rid of that. We have to sometimes go into our other panels in order to show you what the actions and things do in there. Let's grab some text, and I'm just going to, let's grab, let's just grab this one, this one's fine. And I'm going to type the word create, because this is just a really quick, and then I'm going to say return, and I'm going to type create again. And I think I am going to change that font, but that's okay. So there's my two creates, 
Okay, I'm going to go in and I'm going to actually go to text and I am going to use my filter here. You have a filter and I want, uh, let's see, I want the multi-layer. I want a multi-layer font. So you can use all of your filters here and help you select your fonts. And I'm going to hit the back button and there we go. Let's go a Frightful Affair. It has several layers. So I've got the word create. Well, I had the word create. Let's do it again. And I'm going to hit return and create. So I have two lines and I'm going to say done. So now I have them all. That's fine. I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger. I'm going to stretch it out just so we can see. When you're working with your font in your actions, first I'm going to go back because I forgot to tell you guys on this. Uh, well, I did tell you on the fonts, but just in case. Here you can search your Cricut fonts, your system fonts, and all fonts, and then you can search by typing the name, and then you can also broaden your search by doing your filters or narrow your search, not broaden it. <laughs> All right, so once you have found the font that you want, then your advanced tool is going to come up when you're selected on some text. Ungroup to layers will only show if you have layers in the font. For example, if I click on this one and go to advanced, ungroup to layers is grayed out because I don't have any layers, okay? Ungroup to lines is there. I can ungroup to lines, and what that's going to do is give me two different lines of text instead of one, where I typed them in the same box before. Now they are separate, okay? That's what that's going to do. And then you have your advanced ungroup to letters. So I can ungroup that to letters, and then I can move those around and bring those together individually. You're going to do this by hand without the cursor, but you can bring all of those together. Oops. I wanted to undo, undo, undo. Let me get my line back. So I want to make that bigger so you guys can see it. And then advanced, ungroup to letters. And now I can bring those letters in using my grid guides and keep them lined up and selecting everything and making them come in and touch as they are intended to look. Oops. Make sure you're selecting them all. And then you can line that up. And that doesn't quite line up for me. So what I would do in this case is make my C a little bit bigger and move it. That's a little bit too big. This font is kind of funky. I don't work with it much. You can tell. <laughs> and then I'm just going to select it. That's getting close. But you can see how you can play with that. And then you're going to bring that together so that they don't cut out of each other and you're going to weld it. And you see that that A filled in. Why did that happen? I'm just going to hit undo. If the part of that E is in there, even just a little bit in that center, then it will cause that to, that's the first time I've seen that on the iPad, by the way, it will ca cause that to close in. But if I make it bigger and I weld, then it will, won't do that. And then I can come back and I can resize it after that. So if you're getting that problem, that's what's happening there. I'm just going to get rid of that. We can keep this one here just in case. What happens when you go to advanced and un you ungroup to lines here? Same thing. But what if I advanced and ungroup to letters? It's still going to move that other layer with it. And I'm still going to be able to size it with that layer. Okay. And I can even see that it has a layer. I have to go back and ungroup to layers individually each letter if I ungroup it that way. So that's what those tools do. Um, it's going to come in handy if you need to curve text and things like that. You're going to have to do that on the desktop app or use another app 
and then save it as an SVG or a PNG and then upload it. So that basically, guys, is going to cover the actions panel and shapes. And now we're going to go over to edit, sync, layers, undo, and redo. We're going to talk about the camera and settings all in the next video. And then we're going to go to make it and the mats. And we're going to talk about a little hidden treasure that you have on the iPad over there that we don't have in the desktop app. So I'll catch you on the next video. Go get something to drink and join me back here.